Today's guest on Self Love and Sweat, the podcast, is Dr. Dixie Short, aka Dr. D. She's a doctor of natural medicine with a PhD in natural medicine. She is dedicated to helping people establish healthy habits to create a natural, healthy, joyful way of living. She believes that by focusing on nutrition, we can rebuild our bodies from within. If you need real skills and methods for holistically advancing your life and career, then look no further. Get ready to start living a healthy and joyful life. Welcome, Dr. D, to the podcast. Thank you. I'm super excited. I can't wait. Or sis, as I call you, because- I know, right? We fam. <laughs> we fam. How's it going? How is Southern California? You look beautiful today. We, we, for those of you listening on the podcast, you can't see her, but she's looking beautiful. And um, I can see you and we're recording this here on Zoom. So maybe you're watching this somewhere else where you can see the video. Um, but yeah, you look happy and joyful and vibrant. And how's it going over there? It's kind of like the name of the game, right? Like you better be able to do exactly what you sell. <laughs> well, yeah, practice what okay. you preach, you know? Right. <laughs> totally. Um, so today we're going to talk about emotional eating. Yes. And we're also going to touch a lot on binge eating because they kind of go hand in hand more often than not. So yeah. And and Dixie and I were talking about this, and I was just like, you know. When I feel, uh, yeah, stressed or, you know, just like under, yeah, just, yeah, just stressed or just like, you know, that feeling of stress, let's call it, <laughs> let's call pressure. it what it is. <laughs> yeah. Pressure, stress, just a lot going on, not necessarily like freaking out about something, but there's just, yeah, I feel like there's a lot to do. There's a lot going on. I, I feel like I lose my appetite. I feel like, you know, nothing really sounds good. I'm just kind of like, mm, what's going to be the most like calorie dense I can eat thing I can eat in the smallest bites. Uh, and I just kind of feel like that. And then I was like, I don't really emotional eat. I don't know. And she's like, uh, uh, everybody does in some form or another, whether we're looking for comfort, we're stressed or whatever, this just is one facet of an emotion for you. And we, and then from there I was like, okay, we got to hop on the podcast and talk about this. And so, yeah, let's just kind of pick up from there. So what are the types of emotional eating? What does that look like? So most commonly there's about three really big types. Um, the most predominant is hands down stress. Most people are either that like, I don't eat at all when I get stressed or that, oh my God, nothing can satisfy me. I need all the sweets and I need all the things. I just want it all. And then you have the second most common would be oddly enough, like depression. So you eat your feelings as they say. And that's because most of the foods that we naturally gravitate towards when we're under stress or when we're really not feeling so amazing is foods that are gonna increase our dopamine and serotonin levels for those of you who are like, Whoa. Those are hormones that instinctively make you happy and they actually produce levels of euphoria throughout your body. And things like chocolate, those are high in dopamine and serotonin release production. And when we are struggling with like a breakup or take a look around, we're stuck indoors, we're trapped, we feel like everything is just going against us. I mean, we lost our favorite holiday, Halloween. We're just trapped <laughs> indoors and everybody is like ready to go crazy. And that means we tend to back on a few pounds because that stress level goes up and we're going for comfort foods. That food term came around for a reason. Those foods instinctively help provide our body with additional chemicals to help keep us happy. And that's why when we were like little and we have those memories of like getting ice creams with grandpa or having chocolates on Sundays with our mom or making cookies, whatever, those memories are attached to more than just those taste buds and the smells. You have the actual chemicals that are being produced with those foods we eat and we don't notice it at the time because most of us are like, yeah, I don't emotionally eat if we're not stress eaters. But I personally fall into the third most common, which is rage eating. And I know it sounds weird, <laughs> like, but I eat when I get angry and it's not so much that I'm like, I want my body to suffer. Sometimes it is, but more often than not, it's because my mouth is my worst enemy and also my best friend. 
But if I'm in a dark place, I lash out with my tongue and I will say things that I instantly regret and that will haunt me forever. And instead of saying them and having that verbal vomit, I will just shove food in my mouth. And I don't care what it is, whatever's close. It's like, oh, does this make me look fat? <laughs> <Mm-mm>. <laughs> right? And then you end up having this horrible repercussion. And it's more than just like that instant issue where you have indigestion. And sometimes if you're eating more sweet foods, you have that huge spike in your sugar levels. And then it automatically dips out. And you're like, oh gosh, now I'm irritable after like half an hour and I'm hungry again. And then that cycle renews itself. So you're playing this constant game of a horrible roller coaster slash merry-go-round. And all you wanna do is just get off. And that's why I think it's so important that we actually talk about emotional slash binge eating because most people have it, but don't realize it anytime Um, because I had my mom ask me like what's the difference between just overeating and binge eating binge eating is like when we have frequent episodes everyone overeats on Thanksgiving let's be real there's a reason you like have a little cat nap after it's because you've just put yourself into a food coma that's like a legit thing Mm -hmm. and when it comes to binge eating that's something that you do more often than just like once a year And when you have that moment of an episode of binge eating, you don't want anyone to know about it. So you're like hiding wrappers. I've had people like throw the trash bags from their fast food binge in the trash can outside because they don't want anyone to know. I mean, they're on a super restrictive diet. They don't want people to judge them. I totally get it. We've all been there. And actually one of the most common people who end up putting themselves in that binge cycle are people who are on crazy restrictive diets because you're basically telling your body you can't have anything. And then you end up like, maybe just this once. And then that once turns into more frequent and the more restrictive, it's just like any child or teenager, they want to rebel. Your body is like, what can I get away with? Maybe Mm -hmm. I can get away with one or two splurges a week, maybe three, let's see. And it just becomes this game and you have so many issues that come out of it. Most commonly, obviously, is weight gain. Um, But you also get horrible issues with your adrenals. So you're actually putting your body at this huge disadvantage. Most of us end up with really bad liver issues, really bad kidney issues, because we can't process our stress properly. We lose our hair, our nails become weak and brittle. We have wrinkles, ladies, those become more prominent. None of us want that. None of us want to have early signs of aging. None of us want to have crazy erratic periods. All those go in hand in hand with the fact that we aren't on like an actual system with our foods and not giving our bodies what they need. Yes. And I... I have to say too, I know that you guys can't see her if you're listening to the podcast. Maybe you can when you're watching. Um, what I love about you, Dixie, I, what Dr. D, Dixie says, what I love about you is you you say it with a smile and it is what it is. And this is, you know, this is it's not something that's, like you said, shameful or something that is um, not something that you want to share and want to talk about and want to, it's very clear that your purpose is just sharing that and um, helping people. And I just love, love, love that about you and uh, your openness and honesty is just like amazing. I love, love, love that. And, um, so yeah, I wanted to point that out because I'm like, what, you know, we are, we're talking about something that a lot of people like take into the closet that are super afraid of that are very shamed about. And for you to come out and be like, yeah, you know, this is what I do. I rate, you know, when I'm at Matt, I never, I never heard of that until you, um, mentioned that. And, um, so what were the three again? The first one was stress. I believe you said stress is the most prominent. Mm -hmm. After that comes depression. So anybody who is just going through an emotional breakup, then we're talking rage. Anybody who's like, I just need to hamper that down. Most people aren't like, I'm feeling amazing. I'm going to feed my face. Most people are like, I'm feeling amazing. I want to spread that amazingness around. So you're like doing all the things when you're in a great mood. So that's typically not one of those emotions that gets a lot of excess food. Yeah. Yeah. Understood. Understood. Okay. So like what would be 
some things, especially now while a lot of us are at home um, at this time in November, I know people are listening from all over the world. So I know a lot of people, um, especially in Austria, where I used to live, are facing another shutdown at the moment. Yep. So um, we are all in this space where, yeah, it's like a lot of emotions. And then you're just like bored. You're like at home in the same space, you know, and then like, yeah, you go to the grocery store like every so often to get, you know, whatever you need for as long as possible. You know, I know for a lot of people, they're minimizing, you know, going out and getting all the stuff. But then it's like, what do you get all the, you know, just kind of like hanging out at home with crappy foods. I mean, what would be some things that the listeners and all of us could do when you're faced in that, you know, moment, you know, how do you kind of snap yourself out of that or come back to and be a little bit more in tune? You know, I know it can feel like, like I said, I'm like, when I feel like for just, I can just explain it through like the way I feel when I'm stressed. It's just like, I was talking to you before. I'm like, what am I supposed to do? Like shovel oatmeal in my mouth and then like have enough energy. Cause I was saying, I, when I stress, uh, when I'm stressed and I like lose my appetite, I don't train. I won't train because I know the repercussions of that. And so I love to lift weights and I love to be in the gym and I love to be training, you know? And so I've learned that during those times, it's really important for me to then, yeah, kind of come back and do more like Epsom salt baths and stretching and relax taxation and all of those things. But with that being said, like just as unrealistic and ugh, as it sounds for me to be like, what am I supposed to do? Like shovel oatmeal in my mouth and have extra food when I just really don't feel like it. You know, that's maybe the other end of the spectrum. It's like, how do I even stop? Like I I'm halfway in it. And it's just like, I can't even imagine what that would be like to not, you know, pound a bag of donuts or some chips or whatever. You know what I mean? Like what are like some really clear calls, uh, calls to action, if you will, or like, I like, I like, um, for me personally, the way that I, uh, yeah, learn and absorb information. No, you do too. Or like very listical, but it's like, what are some things really key tools that we can pull in our toolbox that can help us during those, uh, times, because it's not a matter of just don't eat it. It's not a matter of like, just don't keep it in the house because you can go and get it, you know, like, what does that look like? How do you coach through that? So my favorite thing is actually one of the most simple and most of us have it readily available and you're doing it right now. Drink water. <laughs> water is a game changer. Not only does it naturally reduce your stress level, most of us think we're hungry and it's not really that we're hungry, we're thirsty. 90% of the time when you think you're hungry, it's actually your body telling you, I need water. So drink like an eight ounce glass of water and within 15 minutes, if you're like, okay, I'm still hungry then you're actually hungry. And that's actually gonna help naturally reduce your stress levels. So you have that kind of like breather moment where you can think of, okay, what is it I want to do today? If I wanna do a workout, what's the best plan? I'm not really feeling like food, maybe I can do a protein shake. So you have, again, that fluid situation getting tied in and you're still getting enough calories to where you can actually make a difference with your strength training. Um, so things yeah, that that's what I do. So, well, to your point of staying hydrated, I love that. I always tell people that cause I'm like, sometimes it's just not that you're, you're hungry, you know, you're just thirsty, but I also know that like, if somebody's like going to about to binge, you know, it's like having an eight ounce glass, a glass of water, like is a great thing, but what's helped a lot is, um, for like clients that I work with and just myself in general, just like even being at home is brewing like a big thing of really awesome, all the flavors, the citruses, tea, like putting tea on the stove and then having it like readily available. The whole house smells good with like clove and ginger and orange peels and whatever. So then I'm staying hydrated. I'm also consuming like a beverage that is, yeah, has a lot of great properties in it, but I'm not eating, you know, especially if you feel like you're having like continuously, like a continuous meal throughout the whole entire day, you know, um, that's really helps a lot too, especially with like, yeah, boredom, you know? And so now as we're talking, cause I haven't really had this conversation too, too much. I don't know, like with my clients and stuff too, but like, you know, you, me and you are like friend to friend, peer to peer. Um, you know, it's kind of a matter too, for me, I noticed, uh, 
okay, with stress, I feel like I'm not really so hungry, but with boredom or like being next to the computer or like editing podcasts or waiting for things to render or whatever, things like that boredom. Once I want to grab the chips, you know, I'm just like, what can I crunch on nuts, whatever, even if I just had a meal or whatever. And so I'm having tea and having like a beverage just at the house. Plus it smells super good. You're automatically like drawn to it when you get up to take a break or go to the bathroom or something. So I really like using tea too. And I know that, you know, tea is tea. And I mean, with some of the caffeinated ones, I guess it can dehydrate you a little bit. So you want to be careful of that for sure. But I, on the point of hydration, yeah, but then also like a beverage and like a non, uh, yeah, a non-calorie beverage, you know, something like water or tea or whatever really helps. Great de-stressing teas that you can naturally gravitate towards. Cinnamon, super great. Plus it's going to kind of give that sweet taste. Mm-hmm. So if you're craving something sweet, that's going to be a great substitute for you. It is actually amazing for improving your circulation and also is great for helping regulate your blood sugar levels. So again, one of those super great, awesome choices. If you have that kind of like sweet tooth, um, it's also really good for, um, and it's full of antioxidants and it's an anti-inflammatory. So it's going to help on that front too. Plus it's also got antibacterial and antimicrobial properties. So it's going to be so like boosting your immune system, like making everything feel good. Shot systems. Yeah, um, orange is a great option too. Orange tea, green tea, because it's caffeinated, you'll want to limit it to like maybe three or four cups a day. Just make sure that you're off, um, like offsetting it with some more water. Um, I love essential oils. I know you do too, London. So um, I think it's a great option to kind of have them going on the back burner so that you have, if you're craving sweets, reach for grapefruit. That'll actually take away your sweet tooth craving. And it's going to actually give you kind of more of like an uplifting mood anyway. I know a lot of us are feeling a little blind. You mean like add a couple drops to your water? Yeah. You can add it to your water. You can diffuse it. You're going to smell it. Yeah, Yeah, totally. I love grapefruit for that. Mm -hmm. Good. And if you take it internally, it actually increases your metabolism. So you're going to be burning more calories. And it's also really great for cellulite. It's great for cellulite too. I was just going to say, I made this bomb roller ball with grapefruit oil and, um, and coconut oil, grapefruit oil and coconut oil. And I put it in a roller and I just have it in my bathroom. So as soon as I get out of the bathtub or bat or shower, or whatever, I just roll it on my legs and butt and it's awesome. I love it. I, I love it in a coffee scrub. For yeah. The but there too. Totally. I love it. So staying hydrated with water, having tea, mm-hmm. uh, essential oils in your water. That's always going to be a great way to just kind of, yeah, get more hydration into your body. And, you know, sometimes it's just a matter of like doing something, you know, I need to put something in my mouth. I need to be drinking something, doing something, whatever. And so, um, being able to, especially in the initial stages, as you're kind of exploring what that means to you and where that comes from and all those things to have those strategies strategies to say like, okay, it's not just going to be the tea, the water, but that's going to be a tool that I use to help me during certain times. I'm going to plug that in there make sure I have that going on a regular basis, really remind myself to stay hydrated as I'm also, yeah, kind of, you know, dealing with emotional stuff that we all are doing that work, doing that work. Totally plan out your meals and your snacks. And then if you find like, oh gosh, I'm reaching for stuff because I'm bored, go out, take a break, go for a walk. That Mm -hmm. will give you a way to automatically recharge your batteries and just looking around at greenery actually will suppress your appetite. So that's super exciting too. Um, so just get your blood flowing and like just spend at least like five, 10 minutes, do a quick walk, come back, go back to work. You'll actually be more productive because you had that time to take a break. It's amazing to me. I like, I'll take, the days that I take like a nap or take actual pre-planned breaks, I am so much more productive. And I'm like, I worked less like time frame wise. And I got so much more done. It's because you actually give your body that time it needs to recharge. Yeah. And I love that you said like, get outside and get moving and like breathe in some fresh air, look at some trees, get out in nature if you can. 
um, yeah, it's so awesome. Or it's such a, a great tip because I, uh, we did a social media post about this where it was like me going to take a break from work. Also me opens the fridge and stares at it for 10 minutes. And then like, really, you know, you're like that habit, you know? And I realized like I was doing that just cause I would get up, I would go like do a lap around the house, open up the fridge, like 99.9% of the time, not grab anything, just kind of be like, did anything else appear over the last whatever? And so I really had to, um, and this is not an, an emotional, I mean, I don't know, it's not an emotional eating thing. I just like was there, you know, but to the point is like, just kind of dialing in and saying like, okay, London, like as soon as you notice like that, you're going to come to and be at like at the fridge, like go outside, make the beeline left out the back uh, to the backyard, get some fresh air, you know, kind of move through that too. And so sometimes it's a matter. And oftentimes, a lot of the times it's a matter of just kind of the little things that you can do to kind of implement and squeeze in, um, that really, really help a lot. And kind of using that as a reframe there has helped me a ton. Cause you're just kind of in this, you know, we're at home office and working at home and you just, I don't know, I get in this, what I call like a zombie mode where it's just like, you get up and you're like, Oh yeah. And you got to shake it up a little bit. I call it like shaking the snow globe. You know, it's like, hello, you know, intention, intention, be intentional, intentional. Where are you at London? Where are you at? You know, and kind of have to check in with myself there. And I got to do that a lot of times. So I know a lot of us, we need to be doing that a lot of times and we're probably not. And so, um, so yeah, I just love that, that tip there. For me, like when I was in high school, I was so busy that honestly, if I wasn't doing anything, my brain was like, we're either eating or sleeping because that's the only time frame that we're ever not doing something. So for me, scheduling in those times to just actually relax is so one foreign, but ridiculously beneficial that I look at like my high school years and I was like, crap, why wasn't I doing that before? I could have got so much more done and I would have had sanity. But I mean, it's, it's amazing that these, all these tips, they're relatively free and you have access to them right now. You don't have to go out and buy anything crazy. It's something you can implement today. And another great one, if you're like, I can't go out because we're on super duper lockdown and I just can't, that's fine. Like I have a client in Taiwan right now who's in full blown lockdown because she just transferred over there. And I was talking to her about meditation because mm -hmm. if you can't go anywhere physically, you can go somewhere mentally and it'll be totally the same kind of like change as far as your body and your chemistry. And she is over the moon. She's been doing it for a week and she's like, I don't want to leave quarantine. Is that a, is that a bad thing? She's, loving <laughs> she's it. like, my food gets taken right to me someone does my laundry. She's like, this is the greatest vacation I've ever had. And I was like, it's kind of like a blessing in disguise. And she's yeah, like, a little yes. opportunity. Yes. All the opportunity <laughs> during this time. <laughs> but yeah. Meditation. I mean, I'm a fan of that regardless of if you got all your eating and emotions in check, or if you don't, which we don't, uh, <laughs> I, I, meditation has changed my life. Absolutely changed my life. Um, especially this year, especially in 2020. Um, yeah, there was a lot of days where like you do nothing you're in home. I was, I was in Austria and so I was completely in my apartment, you know, a lot of the times and meditation, you know, like you said, you, I would wake up and I would be reminded, um, a lot of people have maybe listened to the previous podcast, but if you haven't, um, it was, I was living in Austria and now I am in the process of moving back to California. And in that process, I'd lived there for six years and trying to get here. It was like six canceled flights or well, no five can't four canceled. And that fifth one was the, was the magic one. And, um, yeah, I would wake up in the morning and just be like in a panic, you know, and really just closing your eyes. And like you said, going to that place and it took practice, it took repetition, it took consistency, it took habits, you know, it wasn't just like I closed, you know, my eyes, I had done a, a bunch of meditation before that, like different types and styles and kind of explored that and would do like 21 day meditation challenges or this, whatever. But this was really like, I feel like I don't think I missed a day this whole year. Like I can't afford to miss a day of meditation. Let's say it like that. Like that place is so peaceful for me now. And after just showing up and continuing and continuing and, and sitting there with my thoughts and being like, what the heck is this meditation? Everything's crowding today, you know, and just, just kind of, you know, showing up regardless has just helped so, 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 so much five minutes, 10 minutes, 30 minutes, whatever. Um, and I'm actually super excited because I'm going to Cancun, Mexico, um, in like two weeks for a meditation retreat. And it's basically seven days of all different types of meditation. And I'm just so excited to explore that. And 
that's a huge one too. So I love that hydration, meditation, getting outside in the elements, you know, and I think, you know, just let's talk a little bit about, let's share a little bit more about, um, you know, when it comes to emotional eating and what we can do to work on that while we're in quarantine, you know, like what, what is the, what would you, um, you know, when it comes to coaching or therapy or books to read or conversations to be had or just certain things, because like I said, those three things are like really awesome and really tactical, but I love it when people, you know, continue to explore, okay, well, where did that come from? You know, how can I, you know, forgive that situation and how can I, or continue to forgive that and have gratitude for that experience and for this learning in my life, you know, there's like so many things that come to this big package. And I know we can't unpack it all here and we're not unpacking everybody separately here either, but, um, you know, really moving forward with saying like, yeah, you know, this is something I have been experiencing in my life. It's recurring, you know, what can I do to, um, explore the healing there? That's beyond like having more water and getting outside, like, you know, that real, um, healing there. What would you yeah. Suggest. I know like some apps, like I've used them before, even when I was in, you know, Austria and I was like freaking out talk space and those other, you know, therapist apps where you can just type and talk and let out your feelings. Like I loved those. Um, you know, I, uh, have gone to do therapy before to somebody in, um, in my hometown here. Great guy, super amazing. Loved him. And he would do some FaceTime sessions with me, not this year, but before, you know, because it's so like, I just share that because it's like, so awesome to have people there by your side to help you unpack that. It sucks to unpack it alone. And it sucks to like push it down alone. You know, that's like a, you know, and so I, I say that cause I'm like, yeah, I love being in therapy. I love coaching. I love, you know, people who want to, you know, work with me and help me kind of explore that healing even deeper and even more. And I just say that because it's like, sometimes people feel really ashamed and afraid to be like, oh, therapy, <gasps> talk space. Should I, you know, but I mean, I use it. I love it. I love it. I think that's one of my absolute favorite things about going into the health profession. You are legally required to actually have a therapist. Anyone who is a therapist, they're legally required to meet with a therapist regularly because you have so much baggage from other people that gets put on you and you don't realize what you actually take with you and kind of hold on to. And it's nice to have like a sounding board so that you can see like, oh, okay, that's normal or ooh, okay, that's not normal. And when it comes to emotional eating and binge eating, there's so many different things that can cause it and whatever is kind of like your root cause, that can actually be indicative of what type of emotional eater you are. And what type is actually going to tell you, like, for example, if I'm not a stress eater, doing stress reduction tips isn't really going to help me if I'm depressed. I mean, yes, there are going to be some obvious benefits because most of the stress reduction tips are going to help you with overall health. But if I'm already in a dark place, I need immediate help. And the best way to get that is with a professional. Mm -hmm. And you need someone to kind of just basically determine whether or not you are at an immediate risk or if it is something like, okay, you're just a little down today. That's totally fine. We all get down. I mean, every one of us has had a dark day. It's just part of life. And it kind of gives you that opportunity to have that contrast where you can't have good without bad. And it makes those good moments so much better because you have that comparison to match it up to. And when it comes to things like this, the biggest hurdle for most of us is actually talking about it. Yes. And that's the best part. It's the so, scariest, most knee knocking, trembling thing, but like where the magic sweet spot, all the honey is. The all of it. Everything is behind that door. Yes. It's terrifying. Cause it looks like, you know, that it clown, but Behind it is, you know, Candyland. So just open the door. Yeah, I know. I know, but it can be it's so scary. It's like that, that starting point, that one thing. And, you know, um, and I always tell my clients this, I'm like, 
it's like I say, like, you don't have to give everybody the whole enchilada. Like you don't need to post on Facebook that you're going through, you know, you can, if you feel like that's, you know, that's a whole nother conversation, but like one person, even if it's like a professional, like, you know, therapist, doctor, whatever, someone you need to talk to. It's not like when we say like, tell people about it, that you need to go to your next like happy hour with all your girlfriends and share all this, uh, you know, and I love the fact that I have a close group of friends and tribe that I have like relentlessly cultivated over the last decade of people who I know are ride or die around me. I am so thankful for that. Did that for a reason, you know, because we're not meant to do it alone. And when we try and try and try and try, uh, we just feel more alone and alone and alone and alone. And we think like, oh, I'm the only one experiencing this, you know, I'm alone, you know, and then you talk to more people about it. You get to work with coaches and pro- no, this app, you know, yeah, you might feel like you're in a dark space, but you know, we got to keep going to see the light at the end of the tunnel. We're like in the middle of the tunnel right now. Of course it's going to be dark. You know, let's find a little lantern here and like, keep on keeping on. And, um, and yeah. And so, um, you know, sometimes people feel like tell somebody or talk about it. Well, sometimes it's, yeah, writing it out in a journal first and then getting it out to someone that's a professional or most importantly, just someone that you trust and someone, if they came to you with that exact same information that made them feel equally as naked, you know what I mean? That thing, um, that you would receive it, you know, just the same where you're like, oh yeah, I would never, you know, I would totally, you know, listen without judgment and love them. And, you know, just see them the exact same way. Um, it's always nice to have that person. And I, I have, um, a handful of people like that in my life where I'm like, I, you know, I know I could tell them like all of it. And even though I would feel really uncomfortable, um, naked, just kind of like all the, you know, that kind of feeling where you're like, Oh, um, I exposed. Yeah. Even though I would still, because you, you get to see like, oh yeah, I've been, I've been there or like, I, and I still love you, you know, like that, those people around you that can cult, you know, I still, I guess I got your back. Okay. That happened, you know, or you went through that spot or, you know, we still love you. You're, you know, we're, let's keep on, you know, keep on keeping on. And it's just, I think sometimes we kind of freak out of like, not sometimes a lot of the times, uh, you know, what other people will think when we, you know, and we live in a, now when we're at home office, working at home, only scrolling through, scrolling through Insta land, then you're like, have an even more distorted version of, you know, how things should be. And, you know, are, and that's, why I'm like, I'm going to be on Instagram stories and like my, not even on purpose, but it's just like, I want to, you know, kind of show in the life. And it's like, I never get ready for that. Like, I just hope, hope and pray, put a backwards cap on a little bit of lip gloss or like try to shake it out a little bit, you know, if I'm not, cause it's just important for people to see like, you know, real life stuff and kind of what's really going on too. I feel like that's super important as well. And so, um, yeah, I don't really even know where I was going with this. And maybe you can pick up where I left off, but I was just like, yeah, I was just thinking in, um, yeah. What did I, where was that? Where was I going with this? This <laughs> I feel like the biggest takeaway from like 2020 is that we've realize that it takes a village period for all of us, yes, whether we're raising exactly. kids or just Amen. raising ourselves. At the end of the day, your vibe, so like what you decide to put out there, that's going to be exactly who you attract. And you'll see that most of your friends are very similar to you. So they are probably struggling with similar situations. And if you already trust them, why not open up to them about what you're going through? If you're still like, okay, that's I'm not ready for that, that's fine. There are so many groups now that are out um, online. They've done a lot with telecommunications because, you know, you can't go into your therapist's office. So it's nice to have that, like you can come right into their home and have that moment where you can tell them what you need to. It's completely closed door. I can't tell anyone your information because that's the rule I take on. It's a part of the oath. And when it comes to doing other things, like you have, there's so many books now, there's so many things that are just kind of bringing it more into light. I'll write a few blogs so that you guys have like more information so that you have some, something tangible and I'll put some links to some awesome books that I absolutely loved. There's this one that's on binge eating only and it's like how to stop yourself from overeating and how to identify if you are a natural overeater. Like I never expected to be an emotional eater. And then I was reading through the book because it's part of my curriculum for school. And I was like, huh, well, I am that person, but it was not for like what I anticipated 
emotional eating was. Cause I was like, Lyndon, I thought all emotional eating was stress or like depression. That's only two pieces of the puzzle. Most, another most common one is rage. And I am totally that person. So, I mean, the more, you know, the better equipped you are to kind of take care of you. And I think that is probably the biggest takeaway you can get from anything you come into contact with, especially this year. The more you can learn about you, the better equipped you'll be to like kind of live your best life and have the best way to kind of tackle anything that you would like to get rid of. Like, for example, yeah, I would really like to work on my verbal diarrhea during my rage moment. So I don't have to rage eat. And then I know that I have emotional issues where I kind of like have weight for a reason. It's my, like my armor keeps me safe. And I know personally for me, that's another hurdle. So you're just like, there's all these layers. And the more you learn, the more you're like, okay, well, I just break that piece off today and we'll take this part tomorrow. It's totally fine. That's the way you should approach it. I mean, it didn't all happen overnight. You're just going to slowly chip away until you get what you want. You're kind of like taking that rough diamond and polishing it up so that it is like the hope diamond without all the curses. <laughs> Yes. I love that. You said that too. It's just like bit by bit, piece by piece, but yeah, don't do it alone. It takes a tribe. It's awesome to have people around you that like, as you're exploring a different layer, do you know, people that you can go to that you can trust and all of that. And so, and I love what you said too, because it's just proof that we're, we're doing the work you're doing the work and then we're continuing to show up for ourselves as we are for our clients. You know, it's not, you don't just get to a point where you're like, everything's great. Now let me go help people. It's like, no, there's purpose in the pain and we're going to share it as we go along and leave you like the breadcrumbs, you know? So that way I, I, there was a quote where it was like, I don't know what, I don't remember exactly how it went, but it was like, my goal is that I, this is not how it went. This is not how it went at all. I'm going to butcher it. Okay. The, The goal is as a woman to climb to the top of a mountain and make it taller. So that the next woman that climbs has a better view but that's not how it was. It was something like that. Like do when you get to the top, like make it taller. So then the next person has like an even better, broader, bigger view. If that makes sense. My goal is to make like a sweet path. So it's easier to get to the incline, but I'll make it a little bit higher. So you have a better view too. (laughs) I don't know where I saw that. I totally butchered it, but it was like, yeah, it was basically like, yeah, I want to do the work so that other women when they, you know, that they can have a, uh, uh, yeah, a better view and easier path and not make them, you know, we're all gonna, we are all going to, you know, have our own journey and make, mistakes and falls and whatever, like on our own, you know? And so I just feel like either you fall on that path, the thicker the path becomes for somebody else. (laughs) And I feel like if I share it, you know, put something out there based on like, yeah, what I, you know, know and teach and be, you know, true, or it's like a kind of a vulnerable, like kind of more personal, you know, moment or whatever it all is, um, you know, to provide value and to help people, you know, just kind of not have to make the same, you know, mistakes that we have. We'll all, we'll all, like I said, we're all going to be on our own path. We're all going to do those different types of, you know, I'm going to do it my way or do it, whatever. But I feel like when we share, it's like, okay, this is what I did. So don't make this mistake. Or here's your permission slip to share your messed up stuff too, (laughs) you know? And like, that's really nice. You know, it's like, Hey, I'm not perfect. Here's your, like, you know, your, your unofficial past to be imperfect too around me. You know, I think when we share a lot of that kind of stuff, we either kind of like, you know, that at least when I share, it's like, Oh, I made this mistake. There's like an actual thing you probably should not do. But then also like I made this mistake and hopefully you learn from it or like you just get a little bit more permission to say, you know, oh, I made that mistake too. I can forgive myself and just kind of move on from that um, as well. So I just kind of feel like I share from those two places all the time. Honestly, that's one of the things I absolutely love about you. And I feel like most of the people that I've met who have like an Instagram account or anything like that, where they look perfect and everything seems like it's all, it's always put together. When I meet them in person, like you look nothing like the person you are on this like account that you're putting out there. And to me, that's so weird. And then I had someone who like was watching my videos and saw my pictures and like, you look just like your photo. I was like, duh. (laughs) like, Thank you. (laughs) But isn't that the point of my photo (laughs) to look like me? 
But I think that that's like such a huge thing. I, I know right now we have like this kind of like mentality of everything's perfect and with enough filters, I'm sure we can make it pretty damn close to perfect, but you're perfect the way you are. I mean, I like having my flaws and yes, I totally stumble, especially when I get super excited about something, I will like verbally trip up a couple of times, but it is what it is. Just it's how you know I'm really excited about that topic. <laughs> I love it. I love it. And we have, Dixie and I have conversations like this all the time. So we have like work meetups where we meet up to do like work together and then talk and work and talk until it's dark. So we just do this kind of all the time. And so it's so great to not only say, Hey, you should have someone that you can talk to about certain things and just, yeah, vibe off of and open up to it's one thing to say that, but then I'm just super thankful that I can do that with somebody. I already do that with here on the podcast like this. And to be honest, I get a lot of requests for people to be guests on the podcast, nothing against them at all. Like, I think they're all great. I just have chosen to bring people on the podcast that I've known for a long time and who I've had a a lot of conversations with. And actually Dixie, I haven't known you for as long as a lot of the other people I've had on the podcast, but it it just means like those people that I feel like I, we've put in the hours of conversation so that when we come to the podcast and talk, it's just like we hit record. We didn't do anything to prepare. It's not really like Q and a, uh, you know, style. We had a flow of what we wanted to talk about and we know how we conversate. And so, yeah, I just, what I really like about doing that and not to say I never, I won't ever. And maybe it's just for me personally, cause this is my podcast and it's only, you know, I think by the time this one gets posted, we'll still have under 30 episodes, you know? So maybe it's just me like, yeah being comfortable and wanting to bring people I'm already comfortable with, uh, having conversations. Uh, maybe eventually I'll have other guests that maybe I haven't right. met and see what? Where it goes. yeah, see, see where it goes. <laughs> yeah, no, totally see where it goes. But to the point is I just like, yeah, I'm so pumped that we could just press record and have this conversation as we usually do and that you guys could all tune in here. So all the blogs that Dixie writes, uh, that Dr. Dixie writes, um, I will put in the, um, podcast show notes. I'll also be showing, uh, sharing them a ton on social media as well. So you guys will see those and then tell everybody where they can find you. I'll put the links down below too, but they're listening. They probably had their phones ready on Instagram or on Safari ready to Google. you. (laughs) So on, um, websites, it's askdrd.com. And then all of my handles, it's askdrddnm. Ask Dr. D D N M doctor of natural medicine on all social medias. Thank you so much for being here. Miss you. Ya, love you lots and can't wait to see Friday. you again. Actually, yeah. Wednesday. Oh yeah. Well, Wednesday we're talking Friday. We're talking, <laughs> but I also can't wait until I can see you in person again at some point. It's going to be awesome. Yes. All right, everybody. Thank you for listening. Thank you, Dixie, for being here. Love you so much and see you guys next time. Bye.